A great ship tackles a big job, bringing home men and women of the overseas services 12,000 at a time. At 40-minute intervals all day long, troop trains arrive at the Southampton docks, unloading happy Canadians. Life belts are worn as a precaution because floating mines are still a menace. Down around the Plimsoll line, Tugs knows the stately queen out of her slipway on the ebb tide. There's a sprightly bon voyage for the repats, leaving a Britain they have come to know well. And Britons say a reluctant goodbye to the men and women who became a part of the island's life in its long fight for survival. Taking the breeze on the after deck is pretty refreshing after the squeeze down below. And at chow time, it's crowded, but the food is tops. The fireboat shoots the works with a welcome to Halifax, which looks mighty good. Back home come Canada's fighting forces with a tough job well done, eager now to tackle their peacetime work. At this government-owned plant, they do a facelifting job on the big transport planes, which made history as troop carriers. Washing an elephant is a cinch compared to taking the war paint off a DC-3. Then the scars of war have to be healed as the first step in complete overhaul. More than 4,000 men and women are kept busy in this reconversion job. The planes that carried parachute troops and served as flying hospitals are stripped down and every part is thoroughly tested. Engines are completely overhauled and replaced. Wings are like new when they are replaced in position. Planned for full passenger safety and comfort, the first reconverted DC-3 is okayed at an official ceremony when the Honorable C.D. Howe and H.J. Symington of TCA look it over. And a special guest is Eddie Rickenbacker, veteran United States flyer. Just because you haven't been able to buy a can of salmon, don't think the British Columbia fishermen haven't been busy. When the run begins, the fleets head out for two months' hard work. Captain heads for his favorite spot, where the net is cast in a wide circle, then gradually hauled in with its wriggling load. Down goes the brailer and comes up with 300 or more at a time. fish from four in the morning to ten at night, and everybody shares in the catch. Within 24 hours, the salmon is cleaned, packed, and cooked. Every bit of the fish is used except the wiggle. Head, tail, and fins produce fish oil. Insides become commercial fertilizer.
the vitamin-packed meat goes out to the four corners of the earth to feed victims of war. Men who lost limbs in the war are taken under a special wing of the Canadian government's Department of Veterans Affairs. Exercises and games prepare them for their return to a full life with the aid of artificial limbs. It's tricky using a mechanical leg or arm, but they catch on fast. Crafts and studies help a veteran readjust his working capacity for civilian life. His wound is no longer a handicap. When he steps out to find a job, he knows what he can do. Employers are eager to help him, knowing that amps have a good record for production efficiency. Even driving a car presents no problem. proved himself in war, now he faces the peace with confidence. <music> High school kids at Woodstock, Ontario are learning to make fine ceramics and are getting paid for it. Holding wet clay into a rose petal takes a fine touch. And there is a perfect flower. John Petrick came from Central Europe, but his designs have a Canadian flavor. He found the ideal clay in Pine River, Manitoba. Each piece is fired three times under tremendous heat in this 54-foot tunnel kiln. is applied with a mixture of dyed clays and turpentine. The Petrick ceramics are well known to experts for their accurate duplication of natural colors. In the finishing kiln, the pieces are given their final heat treatment and emerge with a brilliant glaze. Here are decorative table pieces, brooches, statuettes and even earrings for milady. <laughs> 